thought it'd be <coughs> fun by doing a little bit of warm up. Um, you know, this kind of warm up is good no matter what level you play at. Feels good. Um, it may be a little bit too fast. Um, now, a um, few principles that are involved, uh, just to review, uh, consider uh, kind of a, a knowledge or a, a, a consistent knowledge that I see among really uh, great players. Um, holding the stick, right stick. If you were to set the stick on a table and you were to reach forward to pick up the stick, you'll see that stick lies right up the middle of your hand. Uh, while we're practicing, you can say that practicing is sharpening the sword and performing is dulls the sword. So um, so when we're practicing and we have a chance to like observe everything in a kind of ideal or laboratory condition, um, I'd like you to uh, try to get used to this idea if it's new to you and um, so that it's available. Uh, the tendency is to pick up the stick, just as I mentioned a moment ago. It's lying there. You're reaching forward. The hand is uh, between the first and second knuckle of the index finger. The thumb goes on the side of the stick like that. Notice there's a little bit of space. You can actually see. All the things I'm telling you right now, if you haven't been doing it already, will make the stick feel a little bit insecure, but uh, you get used to it and you'll change it. it allows the stick to vibrate and to move as if it's moving right up your arm or coming out of, as if the stick is coming out of your arm and in fact is an extension of your hand. Okay? Uh, some people have likened it to casting. is uh, that the stick comes up in what I'll call a, uh, a full wrist stroke position. Sort of like a full to the middle or left position. A full wrist, wrist stroke position. And you're going to throw the stick down. And the most important thing here is that the stick Sometimes you have to kind of brainwash yourself that the stick really never goes down. It just goes up. You think up. Up. Uh, in the beginning, you might have to assist the stick to get up there. But in time, as you relax with this motion, the stick will come back on its own. If you were to let go of the stick, it would just fly back. Right? So... getting used to the idea of throwing the stick, okay? Throwing goes along with the principle of dropping, okay? Depending on the, the uh, volume that you're playing, you know, you may want to just drop the stick. Drop. And if there's more... volume needed, then you need more, work, more throw. Okay, so we never hit anything. Also, if you can kind of establish a home base, like where the stick comes back to, <coughs> and pretty much come back to that spot each time, uh, it makes it easier to kind of measure what you're doing, control it. Actually, 
traditional group is pretty much the same as, I mean, the, the match grip is just the same with both hands, so I'm just going to concentrate on traditional grip. I guess your left hand is out. Um, notice, first of all, that the elbow is not resting against the, my body, but that there's space in here, okay? And uh, also, let me take a moment just get any kind of tension out of your arm. So you're like this, and you can bring these two fingers to where they're parallel, the palm of your hand, and then bring this finger next to where lined up on top of these two fingers. This finger is just going to go along for the ride. We don't have to worry about it right now. Okay, we call upon it for certain things later on, but certainly not now. And the thumb just is going to comfortably drop and close the space so that it looks like kind of looks like that. And then you put the stick in here like this. It's very loose. sign. It means you're relaxed. Okay, so, <clears throat> although it can be embarrassing sometimes. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the same thing. We're going to throw, and the stick will also, as I just demonstrated, will come back on its own if you let it. A lot of vibration you can feel in the stick, so. Uh, at what, where are we holding this? I should also mention this. Uh, if if you were to hold the stick pretty far back and drop it just like that, not much bounce. Same thing if you're holding it pretty far forward. So the trick about where where you're holding the stick is where you're going to get a lot of a lot of bounces. That'll do for now. And same thing here.
spent um, whatever time necessary to get comfortable with, with this motion that we talked about in the last section of the tape. It might mean like playing something this slow for a while. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Because what we're trying to do here is to get our muscle memory um, to work for us. Okay, so you know, so it's good. so it might take a little bit of. Once you've done that, um, you're going to take a moderate tempo. Um, this is 50. One, two. So we're going to begin with number one of stick control, first page, page five. And we'll play it like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. I consider this actually a fast tempo. Again, two and three and four and one, two. Now we've repeated it once. We're going to go to the next one now. Number two, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and three, and one, and two, and three. Number three.
Seven.
seven. one. D4. 
55. Number seventy two. Good. Let's take a little break. Now, at fifty, this takes about twenty five minutes. or something to really keep 
relaxed and uh, Horowitz, the great pianist, they used to do a box of chocolates on the piano. So um, the, the point is, is you've got to take breaks and you know, give yourself a chance to absorb this information. And then uh, you can follow uh, a pretty uh, reliable routine if you want. We did it at 50. Uh, if you were to do it then at 51 and 52 and 53 and so on and so forth, uh, you will find that, that if you practice anything this way, no matter how difficult it is, if you're practicing correctly, uh, you'll be able to achieve a velocity that you probably never imagined that you could do.
six.
ten. Forty one, forty 
two.
seven. One, two, three, four. Let's do that again. Let's do from thirty nine. again.
13.
two out. You know, the book suggests that you do each one 20 times. something different than done before. Um, let's take number one. We're going to do it until I announce that we're going to go on to number two. I'm interested even myself in seeing if, if some of the mechanics of, of uh, executing these things uh, alters um, the velocity. For the most part, I would say no, but maybe when you really get up there, things might happen. Um, for that, I think I want to wear a short sleeve shirt.
as I said, I, I the, I'm not sure what the efficacy of this particular exercise is, but I wanted to see how it changes as you get faster. Um, yeah, you do start using more fingers. Uh, on number five, for instance, uh, these are kind of On five, it becomes crucial to to get your hand up on the second beat, so that you have one. Let's see, one. We'll, we'll do it like we'll call it like this. First beat is uh, an accent, and I mean just sort of like a pulse, the same way that you that a that a violinist would phrase, as opposed to making the needle jump. You know, like a drummer can do. We just want like a pulse, so we're going to come from a higher place. So to get to that higher place, we're going to bring the hand up on the second beat. So, so let's say we're starting from that pulse, that first beat of this number five, uh, commonly known as a paradiddle, right? Believe it or not, when I'm doing stick control, I like to think of it not as a paradiddle, but as a wrist turning exercise. But after a certain velocity, you have to bring hand up, I think, and so it would go like this then. The first beat is an accented beat which leads to an unaccented beat. The second beat is an unaccented beat which prepares for an accented beat. The third beat is an unaccented beat which prepares for an unaccented beat. And the fourth beat is also an unaccented beat which prepares for an unaccented beat. And now you're ready for the second group of four of number five and you're slightly higher so that you get more emphasis. We call it an accent. We mean emphasis though. One, there's that accented beat preparing for an unaccented beat. Unaccented beat preparing for an accented beat. Unaccented beat preparing for an unaccented beat and an unaccented beat preparing for an unaccented beat. So we have three out of the four possibilities. The four possibilities are accent preparing for an accent, accent preparing for an unaccented beat, unaccented beat preparing for an accented beat, and an unaccented beat preparing for an unaccented beat. We have, let me see, here's one of them. One, two, three, right. So the only thing we didn't have is the accented beat preparing for the accented beat. To, to work this differently than I presented it, it would probably be that in the beginning, instead of playing eighth notes at 150, um, one and two, that you might just have to divide that in half, like, or even more like this, like one, two. Just work really patiently.
plane.
C's, I find that when you get to the 16th notes, if you try to create the feeling that you're kind of exhaling, so you don't, that doesn't mean you have to do it. You can try it a couple times, but it's more you know, an attitude.
19. And I'm going to play a softer 20, just for contrast.
about this, and we will.